Hey, so in my car, my audio jack stopped working and I thought it'd be a good time to show people an engineering mindset into how to fix an issue. So, you know, I get into my car one day and the audio jack stops working. We're going to take it from there. The issue I'll show you guys real quick is that you can see we're on the radio right now. Can't switch to aux. And the reason for that is there is a sensor in the car that determines when an aux plug is plugged in. You'll see I do have something plugged in here, but still can't switch to aux. That tells you right away the, the problem is probably with that sensor, but I'll show you, for example, I can fiddle with this and you see it'll switch to aux and then it'll go back to radio, switch to aux, go back to radio. So the issue's probably there. Uh, it doesn't usually look like this. I've already started to kind of fiddle around here and I pulled out the audio jack. We're gonna take that out. We're gonna take it inside and we're gonna do some debugging. Let me just slide that out, uh, tape that up just to keep dust out and uh, we'll head on inside and take it from there. We are inside and now we're gonna take a look at the audio jack, try and figure out what's going on with it and then try and fix it. The first thing worth pointing out is how an audio jack works. So you have three sections separated by these black bands here. You have one, two, three. And basically all that is, is the left audio channel, the right audio channel, and then the ground. If we look at the plug that it goes into here, the output has five pins. That's two more than we really need. And I'm pretty sure two of these pins are what goes to the sensor in the car that tells it if an aux cord is plugged in or not. And I'm pretty sure that's where the issue is. So we're going to take a multimeter here. We're going to set it to the continuity setting. And what that does is when these two tips touch, it'll make a sound. So when you touch something metal, like this, for example, even if the tips aren't touching, it completes the circuit and it makes a sound. What we're going to try and do here is figure out when this is plugged in, which of these two pins becomes connected. We'll zoom in here. I'm going to put these two leads from the multimeter on the two pins that I think the sensor corresponds to. So you can see, or really you can hear, nothing's beeping, so nothing is connected yet. When I plug that in, you just heard the beep. Now you also heard the beep stop, and that's where the issue is. So we move this around, we can hear that it becomes connected and then disconnected, and that's where the issue is. We know that these two pins need to be connected in order for the audio jack to work in the car. Something's wrong internally here, with this audio jack, we have a couple options. We can either take this whole thing apart and try and fix the sensor, or we can just go around the sensor. And <laughs> looking at this, you know, it is a single piece of plastic. There's no real good way to get in there. So we're gonna go with option two. Uh, we're just gonna move around the sensor. We're gonna disable the sensor and essentially have it set so that it always thinks an audio jack is plugged in. All we have to do to accomplish that is connect these two pins here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to put a little bit of solder in between there and that will connect the pins. I am going to stabilize that guy a little bit. I'll zoom out a little bit. First step on the soldering is we're going to take this flux here, just a little pin, and we're going to apply some flux to the two pins that we're gonna be working with. Looks like we've got some good flux on there. And close this guy up. And I grab our solder. And we are going to connect these two pins. I'm gonna actually get this multimeter out of the way so we don't accidentally melt anything. And then we'll get in here. All right, looks like we have those two pins connected. Got a flux remover pin here. After that cools down, we're gonna clean up the flux a little bit, and then we'll go back out to the car, and hopefully uh, we'll see that this is working. We've cleaned her up. 
Actually, you know what? Before we go back out to the car, why don't we do a little test here with the multimeter? Zoom back out a little bit. Uh, set this guy back to the continuity setting. Again, you know, these are touching. Everything should be working. So we're just gonna touch the two tips and we can tell that they are connected. Let's take this bad boy outside and hopefully the audio jack works now. We're back in the car and hopefully we'll see if this audio jack works. I'm gonna start the car. I'm gonna take our newly restored audio jack. We are going to plug it in. There we go. And then let's take a look at the aux jack on the radio. We can see we've got a stable aux jack. Nice. Move this guy around as much as we want. And the aux does not change to radio. We can switch to radio. We can switch to aux. Back to radio. Back to aux. And there are no issues. Perfect. So that's the engineering mindset. You know, we identified a problem. We debugged it. Tried to figure out what's going on. Then we looked at our possible solutions. We picked the best one. And we executed. We fixed the problem. Hopefully that gives you guys some insight into a general idea of how to fix any sort of problem, not just aux jacks, but anything, you know, problems with technology, problems in life, same kind of idea applies. Hope you guys enjoyed.